A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. It is a lovely Monday morning here in beautiful Dangriga. I pray that all is well where you are this morning. This morning it is a bit blue-ish gray, but I see the sunrise over on the horizon, and I hear a neighbor of mine, well, listening and um, <laughs> enjoying what is outside <laughs> sometimes you have to just pray and ask god for the safety of other people this beautiful monday morning the 29th day of november and i really should wish you a happy new year we are in a new year we are looking at the season of advent yesterday we celebrated the feast of saint andrews and we also celebrated the first sunday in advent and of course advent marks the beginning of a new year for us in the church and so we're going to kick things off this morning with one entitled eternal ruler of the ceaseless wrongs because that's what we're waiting for in advent the hopeful expectation of the coming of our lord so let's have a listen as we listen to this one eternal ruler of the ceaseless wrongs here we go
that one there entitled Eternal Ruler of the Ceaseless Realms. And you know me. I have a thing for organ music and for a cappella um, songs. Let's get our words back here up on screen then for today, November the 29th in 2021. This beautiful Monday morning. And here we go. Ha ha. We've got it. There it is. We continue with our opening sentence, and if you are following along in your books of common prayer, we will next be on page 35. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Words from Psalm 122, verse 1. Using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Together we pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle de Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37 in our Books of Common Prayer. O shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed that would have been displeasing to Almighty God, that would have been perhaps unjust to our neighbors, or that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms for this morning are Psalms number 1, 2 and 3. Let's have a listen. Psalm 1, 2 and 3. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like shaft which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against his anointed? 
Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in division. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possessions. You shall crush them with an iron rod, and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear, and with trembling bow before him, lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Lord, how many adversaries I have! How many there are who rise up against me! How many there are who say of me, There is no one to help him in his God! But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down to go to sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely you will strike all my enemies across the face, and you will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belong to the Lord. Your blessings be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of the Redeemed, which is based on Revelation chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One, and all nations draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 6 through to 16. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 6 through to 16. Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of Israel, and for four, I will not revoke the punishment, because they sell the righteous for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals. They who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth, and push the afflicted out of the way. Father and son go into the same girl, so that my holy name is profane. 
They lay themselves down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge. And in the house of their God, they drink wine, bought with fines they impose. Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars, and who was as strong as oaks. I destroyed his fruits above and his roots beneath. Also, I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and led you 40 years in the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised up some of your children to be prophets and some of your youths to be Nazarites. It is not indeed so, O people of Israel, says the Lord. But you made the Nazarites drink wine and commanded the prophet saying, you shall not prophesy. So I will press you down in your place, just as a cart presses down when it is full of sheaves. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not retain their strength, nor shall the mighty save their lives. Those who handle the bow shall not stand, and those who are swift of foot shall not save themselves nor shall those who ride horses save their lives. And those who are stout of heart, among them the mighty shall flee away, naked in that day, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you allow me a few minutes to get back to the beginning of our reading for this morning, our reading is from the book of Amos, chapter 2, verse 6 to 16 and here we are aha there we are and the book of Amos is an interesting one and we would have missed the the first chapter in Amos which talks about the judgment that the Lord was about to put on the nation and of course in Amos chapter 1 it tells us about who the man Amos was and his message and Amos was a prophet and you know he his name means burdened or burden bearer yes and since most of the prophecies of Amos concerns coming judgment on either the nation surrounding Israel or judgment on Israel itself then Amos having to bring this prophecy was a man with a burden and the message of Amos was simple judgment 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 and his judgment was what he saw from the Lord concerning Israel so he was primarily a prophet to Israel, and although he spoke to many nations. And he serves in the days of a divided monarchy, the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. <coughs> Pardon me. And Amos served as a prophet. The people of God, divided into their two nations, had been in this divided state for more than 150 years. And the southern nation known as Judah and the northern nation was still known as Israel. And through the period of the divided monarch, the southern kingdom of Judah saw a succession of kings, some godly and some ungodly. And the northern kingdom of Israel saw nothing but a series of, of wicked kings. And Jeroboam, the son of Joash, was one of the better kings among these wicked men, especially in a political and military sense. But he was still an ungodly man because he did not keep the law of the Lord. And it was the lack of keeping the law of the Lord that influenced the nations to turn away from the things of God. And the turning away from the things of God is what brings about the message of Amos. Yes, the Lord roars from Zion and, and utters his voice from Jerusalem. So the people are doing abominable things. And so the Lord is going to bring judgment on the nations and this judgment is listed out now at the ending in the first book of Amos and then now in the second chapter sorry of Amos the judgment of God's people and the judgment is going to be on Moab and Judah yes and Moab gets the first word for three transgressions yes and for four I will not turn away its punishment yes and listen Moab was a southern neighbor to Judah and was the last of the six judgment that Amos proclaimed against the Gentile nation. God promises judgment against Moab because of their cruelty to Edom and her king. And it's interesting 
because Moab is going to get its judgment um, read out. Judah is going to get its judgment read out. And of course, Israel will get it. And what is happening is that this whole for three transgressions and for four, I will not turn away from its punishment. It's remarkable to see that the same judgment formula is applied against Judah, the people of God, and applied against the previous um, Gentile nation. And it's like God is judging everybody with the same yardstick. And it made me chuckle because just in last week, I was talking with some of my children um, from the church and they wanted to know which sin is bigger sin if there is big sin and small sin. And I kept telling them sin is sin. And they were saying, but if I steal a cookie out of the jar at home and I kill a man, that has to be different sin because one seems more weighty than the next. And it's interesting because they couldn't grasp the concept of sin is sin. Killing a man is far worse than stealing a cookie. And I explained to them that in human terms, the weight of stealing a cookie is far worse than killing a man. But in the eyes of God, a sin is a sin is a sin. And yeah, I guess because of their age, that for them was was an interesting thing to try to grapple with. But here we see in the book of Amos that what God is doing is exactly that. He is not looking at whether you are Gentile, whether you are Jew. He's not looking whether you are from Judah or whether you are from Israel. He is saying your abominable acts are going to be punished one in the same. I'm not caring about who is the chosen and who is not. And you know what? We may find it easy and even comfortable to expose and rebuke the sin of those who we deem are not the followers of God, but we might be more lenient towards those that we deemed are followers of God or like us. And the whole idea of take first the, the log out of your own eye before you try to take the splinter out of your brother's eye come into play. Yes? It would have been easy for a prophet from Israel to go and say, Oh, you wicked nation, you over there who does not have any relationship with God, you are going to perish. This is going to be bad for you. But that's not how prophecy works. Amos had to do what he was told to do. And he pronounces his judgment on everybody just the same. Yes. And just as Amos went on to look at sins among God's people, he went and looked at the sins of people who did not claim to be followers of God. And he looked at them with the same eyesight, knowing that the proclamation of judgment he was bringing was going to be the same judgment for everybody. And we should really do the same. Yes, we shouldn't try to be more lenient because such and such is a member of our church. And then when somebody does the same thing that such and such does, you judge them with a different yardstick than you judge Mr. or Miss such and such. Yes. And we are guilty of doing it, you know. You know that, right? Yes. I come to your church and I'm a nobody. Nobody. I'm a nobody and I do something and you look at me with, really harsh eyes and then someone who is there every day or every Sunday every time the church door open come and does the same thing and you let it slide sin is sin all is sin hmm? and that is something that the Lord will pass judgment for and why are they going to be judged because they have despised the law of the Lord yes the nations had turned away from God. They had disobeyed the law of the Lord. And there was a higher accountability that God required of any of the six Gentile nations, yes, from his own people. And that we have to be mindful of because the, the New Testament will tell us, Amos, of course, is in the Old Testament. And the New Testament will tell us, Jesus himself will tell us, yes, it is better for a millstone to be placed around the neck of one and he be thrown into the sea than for him to lead one of my little ones astray. And the responsibility of those who know the things of God, those who know the laws of God, um, they are weighed differently. You see, if I know what is right and I choose to do contrary to that, I am going to be held to task more so than someone who does not know what is right. 
Both are going to be held to task. Both are going to be counted as sin. But because we know better and still chose to do the wrong, there is a greater recompense for us. And that is what the Lord was saying. And he's going to talk about sending fire upon Judah and devouring the palaces of Jerusalem. Why? Because Judah sinned like any other nation. And because they sinned like any other nation, they would be judged just as any other nation. And Israel's sin and judgment would be the same. So Moab is going to get its judgment. Judah is going to get its judgment. Israel is going to get its judgment. And the pattern continued. The northern tribes of Israel had piled sin upon sin upon sin, just as the previous nations that were mentioned. And what was the sin? Amos saw the injustices of the rich against the poor. How the rich took cruel advantage against the poor. More importantly, God saw this injustice and promised judgment. I mean, there was rich against poor in terms of injustice. There was sexual sin where Amos saw sexual immorality and perversion of his day. Yes, a man and his father go into the same girl, which means a man and his son have the same girlfriend. Yes, and these standards were, you know, not acceptable there was something about making sure that you paid respect i mean it's still not acceptable in today's setting but because of pagan worship at the time yes temple prostitution and ritual idolatrous, idolatrous sexual practices were a part of what was taking place in the temple worship of foreign gods and the the jews and those in israel many of them had allowed themselves to be given over to these things yes the pagan god astarte one of the ways that you honored astarte was the young women would have to publicly prostitute themselves and father and sons entered into this impure connection with the same female in order to worship Astarte. But that was not how God wanted it. God had created it one man, one woman. Yes? And the sexual sin, the injustices of the rich against the poor, idolatry, how people worship idols even as they cruelly oppress the poor. This is what Amos saw. And his prophecy showed that God heard the cry of the oppressed in Israel and would bring judgment against Israel. And in combination, the, the, the whole picture is almost overwhelming. And this is why Amos, meaning burden, would, would, I mean, can you imagine your heart is for God, you want good for your society and your people. And this is what you wake up to see every single day. And I could imagine it's like for us listening to the news. Yeah? How do you feel when you hear a different murder, one, two, three, in one night? A different traffic accident at the carelessness of people who are driving without due care of attention. Different stories of, I mean, how many stories of mothers and daughters being killed by a deranged loved one are we going to hear in this year? And violence and injustice and sexual immorality and everything bombarding us from all sides and it is hard it is hard to stay positive it is hard to stay focused it is hard to stay fixed on the things of god and we have to realize that judgment will come judgment will come and we have to be prepared to face the judgment and yet still as we lit the candle of hope in advent yesterday in the midst of all of this yes the lord himself in verse 9 through to 12 i believe it is gives a reminder he reminds israel of his past power and his faithfulness to them yes he reminds them when they first came to the promised land and they saw men who were as big as giants and it took three men to back the one bunch of grapes. They were afraid because they were going against a mighty nation like the Amorites, yet God conquered them. He reminded them that if I did it before for you, I will save you again, but you keep turning away from me. And because you keep turning away from me, then I have to do something about it. And the principle is this. A walk with God is based in gratitude for what he has done for us. Yes? 
but a walk with God continues to be one that is filled with hope, knowing that the gratitude for what he has done is the same or should be the same, knowing that he will continue to do as he has done. And it's important for us as Christians. It is what it is important for us as believers to continually show and share the message of the cross. It is important for us as Christians to continually spread this message of hope. It is important for us in a world filled with all the darkness and trials that exist, that we continue to be light that shine for Christ. And while we be light shining for Christ and reminding people of the good and the glories of God that were, that are, and will forever be, we also have to remind them of the judgment that comes when we turn away from God. Because it can't be just all roses and the Lord will come and save his people. We have to let them know. We have to let them know that while we have hope and while we hold on to our faith, yes, if we turn away from these things, the judgment is real as well. That's it. And imagine Amos in a society when nobody wants to hear anything about God. Yes? In a society where you talk, I mean, Amos had a hard life. The people didn't like him. The people didn't like him because he was not prophesying fulfillment and, and joy and peace and love and all the falsehood that they wanted that made them comfortable. And you have to realize when you speak the truth about God, sometimes people will not like you because you are not speaking in their favor. I always ask people, you want me to tell you the truth or you want me to make you happy with a lie? Tell me what you want. Because sometimes you're not going to like the truth. Because the truth doesn't always sound good or feel good, especially if it forces us to have to face what we are doing that is not right. And poor Amos, in a society where the people are happy in their lawlessness, has to go around prophesying, judgment is coming because of this thing you are enjoying. And he faced a lot of opposition. And so will we. People will constantly try to dim your light. They will tell you that the things of God is foolishness in this world today. They will try to convince you that you are on the wrong path following a God that you cannot see. But you can't lose hope. And you can't lose faith. Because you know that the judgment is real. And you have to persevere through all of it. You have to persevere. I feel for Amos. I feel for Amos. I feel for us. I feel for us. Our jobs are not easy. But yet, we continue to push forward for the glory of the kingdom of God. And the nations around us, the people around us, might deem us ridiculous for wanting to do the things of God. But if we live for the praise of man and not for the praise of God, then our lives would be lived in vain. And I can tell you this much. I don't want to get to heaven or get to judgment, not heaven. I don't want to get to judgment and be told that I had an opportunity to do and did not do. Mm -mm. I must do all that I can now while I still have breath amidst the trials and the struggles and the tribulations. We must continue to work for the glory of the kingdom of God. Amen. Listen, no one says it was going to be easy. No one says it was going to be easy. But by God's grace, we will get it done. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 42. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Our collet for this morning is the collet for the first Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together a prayer for the poor and neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons whom it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit, and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Saturday was Miss Theresa Wood, Mrs. Sylvia Acosta, and Brother Brian Lashley. Celebrating a birthday on Sunday was Mr. James Peters, Miss Barbara Caravel, Mr. Lawrence Young, Miss Barbara Norales, and Mrs. Glenda Parra. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Sharon Augustine, Miss Naomi Leslie, Miss Sharon Beeks, and Miss Freusha Coltman. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have or had a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for your birthday, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Verolyn, and Miss Abelina. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Allison, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, and Miss Elena. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Ilona, Miss Donna, and Miss Catherine. We pray for Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Marcia, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, 
Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, Miss Ruby, Miss Carolyn, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Marta, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Harris, Miss Arlette, Miss Leolin, Miss Geraldine, Miss Glenda, Miss Dominic, Miss Olga, Miss Bernadette, Miss Cynthia, and Miss Betty. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Walter. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Father Hardy, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Dion. We pray for Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Father Jerris, and Mr. Edmundo. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Father Constancio, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Michael Griffith. We remember and pray for Mr. John and Mr. Ian at this time. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray for God's comfort and peace upon those who all who are bereaved. We remember this morning the family of Miss Mary Waite, the family of Miss Kimberly Griffith, the family of Miss Julie Lindo, and the family of Miss Constance Foreman. We pray for God's blessings and peace to be upon all those who are grieving, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. We continue to pray for God's protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Ashley, Brittany, Akua, Ria, Courtney, and Karina. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, Charles, Barry, Alvin at this time. We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for our doctors, remembering specifically Dr. Molina, Manzanero, Shobreen, Rana, Joseph, Ek, Lawrence, Sosa, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, and Nurse Julie. We continue to pray for healing for persons who are infected with COVID-19, all those in the various isolation wards, and even those who are isolated at home. We continue to pray for the ready availability of a cure or a vaccine for this disease, and indeed we pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, persons who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, the opposition, all persons in positions of public trust and authority. We pray for the churches and the church leadership, for the private sector, and for all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19. We continue to remember in our prayers the members of the international community who are most severely affected by this pandemic, and we continue to pray and ask for God's protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disaster, remembering as well those persons who are in the process of recovery following any type of natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws, and the works of your commandments, that under your protection, now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
by means of announcement brothers and sisters i want to thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning it is always a blessing and a privilege to be able to be with you first thing in the morning and of course what a beautiful way to start a monday and to start the week i hope you had a blessed and restful weekend mm -hmm. um it was kind of chilly here in Dangriga over the weekend except well for yesterday there was some sunshine but i do hope you had a wonderful weekend and that you are ripping and ready to go in this new week ahead mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today Following this, we will have noonday prayers at midday. We should have children's Bible minutes at 2.30, where we continue to look at our catechism. And then at 5.30, we have evening prayer. And at 9 p.m., we have compline. I invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are able. And of course, I want to thank you for your continual support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We want to extend congratulations to the Church of St. Andrews out in San Ignacio who celebrated their patronal festival yesterday and we pray for God's continual blessing upon Reverend Elizabeth Tullock, the ministry team and all the parishioners there in St. Andrews. Um, we also celebrated the first Sunday in Advent yesterday and again, I want to wish you a happy new year. When I wished the people a happy new year in church yesterday, the children looked at me like, I was like, yes, New Year's for the church doesn't only begin on the 1st of January. But we're in a new season in the church, the Advent season. Let me tell you, purple is one of my, well, one of my favorite colors. My favorite color is black, but like my absolute favorite is black. But purple is right up there on the list with a nice dark royal blue. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the church decked out in purple. Yeah, boy, I like it. I like it a lot. And of course, this Advent season is all about joyful anticipation and expectation of the coming of the Lord. And no, we are not only talking about the remembrance of his coming as a baby, but as the hymn says, lo, he comes with clouds descending. That's the coming that I am waiting for. Anyway, I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. And thank you again for joining us. And we're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication and then the grace, the dismissal, and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. This one is entitled, the one we're going to close off with, this one is entitled, Though I May Speak. And it's talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where it speaks of, though I may speak in the tongues of men and of angels, if I have not love, then, of course, I am a noisy or clanging cymbal and a noisy bell. And that's the truth. It is the love of Christ that propels us to continue to proclaim the works and the wonders of Almighty God to all around. Mm. Walk in love. I do pray you do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now.